I'm just gonna go ahead and get uh, get going. So, hi everybody. My name is Michael Taylor. Uh, I serve as Early Learning Ventures uh, Membership Development Supervisor, um, and today I'm going to be giving a talk called "Moving Past Paper: A Guide to Childcare Management Systems and Other ECE Technology." And so, um, you know, when I say that. I tend to get one of these two faces that I have up there coming back at me. It's either somebody here is like, oh, technology, that's going to change absolutely everything that we do. It's going to make everything way simpler, all those kinds of things. Or, and more commonly, the face I get back is the grimace of, oh, man, why do we have to have another technology? We've, we're getting pushed to have so many more that don't ever work, all that kind of thing. And that's why I think this training is important because it's really neither of those. It's technology is the same as every other tool, every other training you've had where it's some good, some bad, and if you make it work for you, it's great. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing before I dive into this, I actually wanna just start with a bit of an interactive because I think this is a good way to uh, ground all of ourselves in what this talk is supposed to be about. So, the first thing I'd like to do with you all is actually a short bit of an interactive. Um, I have six categories. I'll have this on the next slide. Uh, but what I want you to do is I want you to rank your admin self. And, you know, if you're a teacher or somebody on, just think about your center as a whole. Um, you know, if you're a home provider, think about that. Um, I want you to think about what is the administrative theme that you are the best at, that you don't even have to think about, you do it in like no time, you don't have any errors, causes you no stress. And then, I'm sorry, but I want you to also think about the other <laughs> side of the coin, the administrative task that you know eats away at you at night, that you just hate having to get to. So those are the two things that I want you to keep in mind. And the six categories that I have for this is billing and invoicing, children and family files, enrollment, staff files, subsidy, if it applies to you, and then parental communication. So I really want you to just think about this, you know, even in the past week or the past month, has there been something, one of these that's really been, uh, you know, a hang up for you? Um, and if you wouldn't mind, uh, what I'd like you all to do is to uh, put in what you think your best and your worst one is into the chat, and I'll monitor that and sort of call out what we see. Oh, also there's a good question uh, in here. So how do we get credit on PDIS? Um, so if you, so sorry, while you're thinking about this, I'll answer the PDIS question. So if you haven't yet registered for PDIS, uh, we will we will include that link again in the post webinar messaging that's going to come about an hour after this, and then basically you just register via PDIS for the same session, and then at the uh, basically on Monday or Tuesday I go in on the back end and I look at you know who attended on Zoom and I approve everybody, uh, so you get your certificate automatically on PDIS so long as you registered on PDIS. So if for some reason you didn't, again, we're going to be including that link. Okay, now as I'm looking through what some uh, people have shared, um, a lot of the best, I see multiple bests for parental communication, um, a couple of the worsts, a lot of filing. So I see staff and child files, staff files, um, yeah, a lot, lot of filing seems to be going on. It does seem that we do have a little bit of consistency in this group, which is great. Um, so obviously, this talk is a talk I usually give in person, as with most things going on right now. It's virtual. So usually what I do is um, I actually have this as a sheet where people come up and they place a sticker, a green sticker on what they think is best, a yellow sticker on what they think they're worst at. And that gives you uh, an overall sense of how the room feels about it. But since we don't have that, I actually, I've been, I have a lot of those sheets. So I just looked at them and counted up the categories. So this is, you know, across several times when I have given this talk, this is what people have uh, told me they are best and worst at. And I feel we sort of track that as well, what we heard today, you know, a best is parental communication and worst does seem to be the children and family files. Um, it is interesting as well. Billing, billing is something that has a lot of emotion involved. It's either the best or the worst. Um, but yes, so 
Now what I typically like to do is have people share a little bit. So if there's something that you are best at and you think you know exactly why that is, if it's a technology, if it's a process, I'd love to hear it. Um, if you wouldn't mind just tossing that in, I will um, go back to that in one moment. Um, the piece that I want to bring up about this is the importance of shared services. So Early Learning Ventures, who we are, we're a shared service organization. What we do is we provide uh, all the same tools to everybody and we train people on that so that they can have success with that. Because again, if you don't think about yourself as an individual, if you think you're, of yourself as part of this entire early learning field, early childhood education field, we have such differences in our groups. We have people that are best at billing, people that are bad at billing. And if we were all one center, we would have the people that are best at it handle it and the people that are best at children and family files handle that. It's just a consistent theme that you see is that everybody has different struggles. And that's why shared services is so important because you don't need to reinvent the wheel. One of my favorite themes about, um, one of my favorite themes about this field is there is so much communication and sharing. So, uh, you know, I mentioned that we, ELV, were a resource partner uh, around shared services, but there in Colorado is quite a lot of shared service opportunities. Uh, so your early childhood councils, I'm guessing all of you are familiar with your uh, council. If for some reason you're not, if that's an unfamiliar concept to you, uh, please email me after this. I'd be more than happy to connect you um, with them. And along those same boat, I see that we have um, several home providers uh, in attendance today. Um, if you are not connected with a home provider association, please let me know. I would love to get you in touch with a couple individuals that might be able to help. Um, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing that's in Colorado and not really elsewhere. Uh, the more states that I talk to, the more I'm surprised that there's not really this kind of grassroots home provider association. Um, in that same vein as well, there's a lot of coaches and everything out here. Um, and so tying in coaches and early learning ventures, I do know that we have an even mixture of people that um, are already using uh, core, uh, using early learning ventures, child care management system, and then people that are not. Uh, and so this is just for the people that are. Just so you know, we have uh, set up that in this time we have office hours available for um, a lot of our early head start uh, leaders. So they are more than happy to sit down and have a little bit of office hours with you. Um, don't worry. I know you can't click on any of this right now. We're going to have this in the post webinar messaging as well. But yeah, so again, as I go through today, I was sort of talking about shared services. Now we're going to be bridging over to technology. And I want you to again be thinking about what do you think you're best at? And more importantly, what do you think you're really bad at and what could help? Okay, and just to run through, um, now that we've done the little exercise, here are the things that I'm going to be talking about today. So very quickly, who am I? And then we'll go through uh, technology and ECA as an overview. Child care management system specifically, because that is sort of like the end-all, be-all technology for child care currently. Uh, it's also what I know the most. And then um, really cool thing, you know, as I told you, so early learning ventures, we're a shared service network. I have some, you know, 300 providers that, you know, dialogue with us at varying levels. And so we hear a lot of different things about what tech is working for people to handle specific issues. So I'll be running through that uh, after we go through child care management systems. But first, who am I? I, I recognize that, you know, I'm... 20 something year old male. And so it's like, well, when did you really know about childcare? Um, I actually was a childcare provider for a while. I had uh, six, six uh, beans in my care. The bad thing is I, I, did, I did have five of them uh, pass away. But don't worry, they're birds. They're birds. It's okay. Yes. Uh, I was a wildlife researcher and it doesn't matter how good an early childhood educator you are, there's not much you can do when your bird is flying and a bald eagle takes it out of the sky. Just sort of have to live with that. So that's what I did for a long time. I love wildlife. I think it's hard not to. Um, 
And so I actually use a lot of the concepts and things that I learned in wildlife for early childhood education. Because the thing is, is, uh, you know, kids are basically wild animals too. Um, and it's these fields where there's not really, um, you know, the actual work tends to not involve data and technology and all that, but you do have to have it on the back end to help. So it's just been really synonymous. So I've been using that data side to really help out uh, ELV over the past three years. Um, but that's enough about me. I want to be talking about technology with you all. So as we all know, uh, technology is getting better and better. Well, it's getting more advanced. Doesn't necessarily mean better. It's getting more advanced all the time. And with that advancement, it is also um, coming specialization. And so, um, you know, people don't always realize, but there has been a lot of specialized technology created for early childhood education. Um, how they're typically shown that is from state groups, you know, state systems you have to use, whether that's CCAPS ATS or, you know, the PDIS or whatever. But it's also coming from the demand side. You're having more and more um, parents and people needing care that are going to be trying to find you via technology, whether that's a website or, you know, an app or however. I don't always, I, I do want to stress before I continue that I don't always feel that technology and these child care management systems are required to run your business. There's a lot of people out here that have had skin in the game for years and have figured out a system that works wonderfully for them. And that's awesome. What I want to present for technology is there's a lot of people that are newer in the field or are having, you know, a specific issue. And that's where uh, technology can really help. I don't think it's a surprise for me to share that a consistent uh, vibe, every study shows this as well, uh, is that early childhood educators feel overburdened and under-resourced. You know, there's more to do than ever before, more to track, and, you know, same number of hours in the day. And one of the issues that we see in childcare is a lot of times resources are just uh, tossed over um, at you and it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be successful at implementing the resource. Um, it, it, it's not always successful. That's why we really think that there needs to be, you know, a shared uh, training over this. I mean, it's the same thing with our children. I, I do apologize for the wild animals uh, children comment. Obviously, they are not similar at all. Um, I just like to connect prior and current. Um, and so what I was sharing there about, you know, an in, inadequate in wedding sometimes of the technology with the support, that's been backed up by a lot of studies. Uh, so for instance, NACI, the Fred Rogers Center, and some others found that increasing access to technology was not actually increasing uh, usage of that technology because it was, again, that same thing of here you go, go ahead and use it. We'll talk to you later. And so that's why we really believe that it's not just this under-resourced overburdened solution is just tossing resources. It's also making sure that you get some support to wet it more calmly. And so that's why I want to uh, talk about childcare management systems. The, there are so many out here. I could have loaded this page up with about 40 more logos. I just uh, did some of the main ones that have a market share. Uh, and I don't like this to be salesy. So I'm going to be talking about ELV, obviously, but I'm also going to be talking about these others. And if you are using any other besides ELV, I would love to hear your experience in the comments so I can share that. Um, you know, there is a lot out there and different things work best for different people. Okay, so First, the basics of a child care management system. These are designed to help your operations from like the day-to-day -day perspective. So, you know, electronic sign in and sign out. Uh, as an example, I know that ELV, uh, Brightwheel, um, I think ProCare, not quite sure about them, but several of us have developed touchless sign in for this, uh, you know, COVID time. It basically, you know, you hold up your phone, scan a QR code, it does the next sign in stage for you. So, you know, just trying to help with those processes to adapt to the time. Uh, it also helps with administrative duties. One of the major ones there is gonna be staff filing, children filing, billing, things like that. 
And then, um, you know, a big tenant, I, I had mentioned that, you know, demand is also pushing this drive around technology. There's a lot of things about uh, parental communication these days. So um, you, you're going to see different kinds of apps around here. Now, the field isn't using child care management systems uh, as much as you might be expected. Um, so Opportunities Exchange, which is a nationwide shared services organization, they estimate that about 20 to 30 percent of child care programs are using them. I, I would guesstimate it's a little bit higher, um, but then there's also people that are using, you know, programs they've figured out over the years that works for them. So child care management systems, big overarching thing. I tend to think that's a bit of a misnomer, um, having like seen a lot of them or um, just talking with providers. I really think there's really like two main kinds of childcare management systems. So on one side, you have administrative focused systems. And so that's going to be ProCare, that's gonna be ELV's core, uh, Kid Care, which is one that's specific for um, home providers. I know a lot of home providers that use it. Um, Easy Care, Smart Care, Tables. Again, there's so many more. But those are going to be focusing more on the back end of your business. Again, that's going to be the billing, the staff filing, all that kind of stuff. Then you also have ones that are um, more attuned to the marketing parental communication side of things. Uh, so maybe the most famous one of those out today is Brightwheel. Um, they, they were on Shark Tank a couple of years back, so maybe... It's ringing a bell for some of you. Um, but again, there's a lot of those. There's Hi Mama, Kangaroo Time, there's Jack Rabbit. Um, Wonder School is a sort of bit of a different one that's come out uh, in the past year or two. Uh, what's interesting about them is they're sort of like an Airbnb style uh, system where they will like provide what they think like mar your marketing rates should be for that area. So again, there's a lot of them. But I really think it boils down into two main groups, the administrative ones and then the marketing ones. And what you are seeing is everybody is trying to do everything. <laughs> that includes us as well. Um, but, you know, I tend to think you can fall into one of the other sides over what they do best. So, uh, again, just to dive in a little bit deeper on the administrative side, it is for, you know, children and staff files. Uh, it does a lot of record keeping for you. So um, for instance, right now we're doing like virtual licensing visits in Colorado. Um, and so with that, sometimes it's, uh, we're actually gonna have a webinar on this in a couple of weeks, but sometimes it is, okay, well, you need to put the files into a Google Docs. Sometimes it's a FaceTime. Um, with ELV, we actually um, work with licensing, so they're able to access it from the system. But a lot of that record keeping to just try to reduce paper because, you know, you can have these long, long licensing visits just because you're trying to find some specific information. You're not sure where it's housed. Um, so this is trying to streamline and centralize that for you. Uh, and then it can also do a lot of tracking and reporting. And then on the billing side, I do think it's important to um, go into that a little deeper. So when I mean billing, it's not just like, oh, here's the ledger. It's automation of your billing. It's saying like, okay, if this parent hasn't paid by this time, that means they're at the past due. We need to put the past due payment onto this ledger. It's a lot of those kinds of pieces to try to take the burden off of the childcare provider and make it more automated so that you can spend more time with the kids and less time with the administration. Uh, so some of the benefits of administrative systems. Um, so with home providers, I've had several tell me that it made them more, feel more professional, um, uh, shrinks the administrative work. This, uh, the picture I have on here actually comes from a provider that was all of their prior paperwork, the things that we were able to take out and automate and put into a system. Um, uh, on the other side, so I did include improved communication with families. Uh, the other side, the marketing side, they go really, really in depth. They have, you know, things like this child received a diaper change at this time. This child got this food at this time, those kinds of things. Um, and then it also helps with a lot of your record keeping. We see a distinct decrease in the number of licensing violations around children and staff files. So... Uh, I'm going to quickly talk about a couple advantages of some of the main systems out there. Of course, I'm going to start with us. Um, so 
The two main advantages that ELV has um, in this realm is we're Colorado tailored. So we have partnerships with licensing. Uh, we have partnerships with CCAP. So if you have any children on CCAP in your center, uh, basically we push attendance directly from our system over to the ATAS, um, which is a bit of an equitable solution because then all parents are signing in the same way. You're not having to have a subset come over and sign in on a computer specifically for it. Uh, and then we do a lot of things with the food program as well. The other main advantage is really ties back to that uh, first interactive I did with you all, which is that we really market ourselves as a uh, partnership and not just a product. Uh, so we want to do one-on-one -on -one trainings for everything you do. Um, that's honestly one of the main reasons a lot of our providers really love us is because, you know, we're going to walk with them through all of those onboarding so that, you know, that little support part of the piece comes in. However, as this is a training, I do want to make sure to highlight a lot of the other system's advantages. Uh, and I chose basically the four that I hear about the most. Um, it is very easy to get a demo of any and all childcare management systems out there. You just type in uh, their name, hit demo, and somebody will get in touch. Um, so a couple of the main ones out there. So ProCare. It's been around the longest. Uh, it has the biggest market share. What they do is they do like module based systems. So it's like, I want this part of the childcare management system and this part. Um, and who I might recommend this for is uh, centers where you might have like a consistent changeover of uh, administrators. And that's because more people are going to know ProCare than all the others. Um, the next one, kid care. Kid care is specific to family child care homes. And what it focuses on is accounting. So your expense reporting um, in both directions, or not billing, but uh, accounts billable, so what you paid. And then uh, also it does a lot of things for the food program. That is all it does. It's what it focuses on, does that well. Um, and so I recommend that typically to homes that are struggling with just those pieces. Um, the other reason a lot of people like it is because it is very affordable. Um, some of these are, you know, more expensive in like uh, anywhere from $20 to $100 a month. Kid Care comes in around $7 to $8 a month. Uh, Wonder School, as I mentioned, they're more of that Airbnb style back end for providers. Um, this is for people pretty new to the field that are having a really hard time with enrollment um, or pricing or marketing or those things. Um, that's where Wonder School really houses itself is helping people understand, you know, the business gamesmanship of getting enrollment in. And then uh, finally, the other one I'd mentioned, uh, I already mentioned a little bit, but is Brightwheel. Really of the apps out there, that is the one that has the largest market share and it tends to have um, some of the better feedback I hear. Um, the only time I hear bad things about it is just around uh, sometimes support issues. Um, but that one does really well with the um, parental communication and marketing. So it allows for you know, that style that I was talking about, if this child receives a diaper change at this time kind of thing. Um, and I know I'm just talking about these very high level. So that's why what I'd like to do is just do a quick uh, five, 10 minutes um, jumping into a system. It's gonna be our system, but everything I'm gonna be showing you is very consistent across system to system. It might look a little different, but again, all these end up uh, doing about the same thing. So I'm gonna be stopping my share so I can jump uh, over to our thing, and then I will be starting it up again in one moment. All right. Thank you all for your patience with me. Okay. So I'm going to be showing you first where you do sign in, sign out. Uh, and again, this is ELV Alliance cores, but most of these work very similarly. So you have um, basically a place that, whether it's on a tablet, a laptop, a desktop, something like that, somebody comes in and they're going to punch in whatever their specific code is. It's tied to the individual. This is how it's able to act as that uh, signature, the sign in sign out signature. Um, I also wanna just highlight on the left that QR code 
Uh, the reason for that is um, due to, you know, currently what's going on with COVID, it allows, what we do is we have like an app, parents hold up their phone, they scan the QR code, it takes them to the next screen. So these work very parallel. I am just showing you the desktop version because, um, you know, I can't share my phone screen with you all. Uh, it also does staff check-in, a lot of them do. Um, so if I hit child check-in, takes me to the next screen. I actually have a kiosk message up, which is a message that I wanted um, our, um, our, our, our parents to know about. So in this case, it's just like, hey, bring an extra set of clothes. We're just gonna acknowledge that. Oh, looks like I also need to approve a time. So I'll approve that. Then we get to the sc screen where I'm able to check in or check out uh, the children in my, uh, that I'm allowed to check in. I'm Grandma Judith, by the way, hi. Uh, so I have Judy and Judy Lowe that I'm going to be letting in. Um, you can see I turned on these alerts. That's something that we do in our system. You don't have to turn it on. It's just uh, you know, a way to communicate some of those due or overdue bits over to the parent. So again, we'll just check them in. That's it. So that acts as your uh, check-in, check-out station when you're using these kinds of systems. Um, there doesn't have to be any signatures because every single individual has their own unique sign and sign out code. So that is the like parent facing front end, just very basic first thing kind of thing. Um, on the other side of the coin, you have the back end. You have uh, what uh, administrators see. And so when I log in here, I get greeted by all of these alerts. I'm an absolutely terrible fake director. Um, we already have learned that. Uh, so basically I haven't updated anything in my system in about two years. So this is the system letting me know that I have a lot of compliance pieces that are coming due or are overdue. So basically uh, what it usually is, is if you know, you're using these kinds of systems, staying up to date, when you sign in, you might get greeted by one or two alerts. That's letting you know, hey, okay, I have uh, a medical expiration coming due. I need to make sure to talk with this family. And you can do that with, with all kinds of things in the system. Um, one of the favorite things that I won't really dive into, um, scheduled reporting, you can set it up so that you get like the core immunizations due slash overdue report. It looks ahead 30 days, sees if anybody has an immunization coming due, looks backwards, sees if anybody has an immunization overdue. And then, hey, I want this to come to me on the first of each month. On the first of each month, you receive an email. If that report's blank, it means all your immunizations are up to date. You don't need to worry about immunizations this month. If somebody does show up, okay, well, this is the parent I need to talk to, and I need to talk to them about this and this and this. So again, very just high level example of a couple of the, the uh, features in here. I don't wanna delve too deep because again, this is more about you know, child care management systems as a whole. I'm more than happy to um, you know, do the deep dive into billing or staff filing or anything like that at um, a later time. But um, I want to get back to um, our presentation. Okay, so I am again going to be sharing back to the presentation. Perfect, there we go. All right, so again, I'll include you know, somewhere in the post webinar messaging, just a little bit of information about um, where to uh, where to contact me so that we could do a deeper dive if you're interested. Okay, so child care management systems. There's a lot out there, really easy to demo with a lot of them. A lot of them are specialized into a specific admin field. If you do feel that there's one specific thing you're really struggling with, um, you know, please let me know. I, you know, I like being helpful. So I would be more than fine direct you to a couple of the main options that uh, handle that kind of stuff. Um, or it might be that your dilemma is answered in this next section of the talk. So other useful technologies. So this is uh, things that I have been recommended from our provider network. Um, and then, you know, I've researched a little more on the side. So the first one I want to go into is something that was recommended to me that I first heard about at a, uh, a home provider association meeting. So again, if you're not a part of a home provider association, you are a home provider, let me know. I'd love to set you up with somebody. Um, so this comes highly recommended. This, um, the provider that told me about it actually allowed me to look into um, the back end, showcasing that basically um, 
two years ago, she saved, I think it was like $1,700. Last year, she saved about $1,100 um, for the price of about $56 a year. Um, and so basically what it is, is it's just like a GPS thing on your phone. When you go out and back, it's recording what the trip was. And then it's sort of like, you know, it knows when to segment them. So then you can go in and be like, oh, this trip was for my business. This trip was for my home, all that. And so then you're able to take all of those business trips at the end of the year and get those ready in a report for taxes to, you know, save money. Because this is a field where it's very, very, um, you know, tight budgets. We all know that. So if there are ways that you can be maximizing your income with the system you're not currently using, go for it. Okay, expense tracking. I've heard a lot of uh, different ones out there over the years. Um, I am including one that was recommended from a provider I trust, but didn't get fantastic reviews online. And then one that was rated really well online that um, I haven't heard from a provider. So anecdote rating. <laughs> um, so basically what these do, things do, what's really cool about, um, to use neat receipts as my example, it's basically you take a picture or a scan of your document receipt, and then it's going to take all those little form fields and move them into a, a specific Excel sheet for you or into QuickBooks or TurboTax or something like that. So, you know, that spiraling giant pile of receipts that you're racking up, this is one of those ways that can uh, be a little bit easier for you. Shoeboxed, I'm a little less familiar with. I've just, um, I've been trying to find somebody that's using it so I can get that firsthand account. So if you are using it, let me know. Um, but again, it exports into a lot of the programs you're already using. That way you don't have to track down all your receipts or worry about that you lost a couple big ones. Um, now I know everything I've talked about so far has a cost to it. So that's why I want you to make sure to bring in some technology that exists out here currently that is free. Uh, the first one of these, Bright by Text. Um, I don't know if anybody's currently using it. It's really cool. Uh, it's used by a lot of parents and then by providers. So it focuses prenatal to five. And what it does is it uh, is targeted to a child's developmental stage. And it will give you um, texts on a regular basis that will include a link to an outside source, a vetted source um, that you know, you know you can trust. And it will basically give activities, ideas, all kinds of things that can be you know, of benefit. So it's one of those maybe little add-ons that you might want to tell um, uh, you know, parents about. And it, what, another little cool thing about it, um, I actually did start here, which is always a nice little source of pride. So one of the places that it gets its information from is Vroom. And so Vroom is interesting and cool um, from a different perspective. It's really for parents as well. Um, but I don't know about you all, but I have heard, you know, in talking to parents here and there, a feeling, um, you know, you want to shake it, but sometimes there's a feeling of guilt that maybe you're not like, you know, maximizing in your child's learning or something like that. And I don't think that guilt is healthy, obviously, you know, there's ways to help with that. Um, and so Vroom is trying to help with that as well. So it's very, it's free. Uh, you, there's an app for it and you can also find it online. But what it does is it's trying to find little trainings, little bits of learning that you can do at any moment of the day. Uh, so an example, you know, is it, if it's bath time, okay, well, here's some things you can do during bath time to both have fun and maximize your learning opportunity. So again, something you might want to just, you know, note in the back of your mind to share out with um, parents. Uh, another free one, this is free for the rest of 2020. Uh, so, you know, we're a shared services organization, as I've mentioned several times. Uh, so we have a bunch of resources. And, you know, due to everything that's going on currently, we just want to, you know, get that from behind its paywall and give it out to everybody. Um, and so there are a ton of resources available in there. There's some trainings, uh, program templates and forms, some more on that administrative side. If there's, you know, a clause that you need in your parent handbook, but you don't know how to word, it's probably not going to be on a resource platform. And also, uh, specifically to family uh, childcare, um, there's an entire toolkit with more um, 
more, more little bits that you might want to use than uh, before. Okay. Oh, I had a quick question pop in the name of the two apps used for receipts. So it was shoeboxed and neat receipts. And I'll go backwards for you just to, so you can write down the names in case you want to get it. And uh, so neat receipts was the one where I had, you know, somebody I trust really recommended it to me. Shoeboxed is, you know, the competitor out there that gets higher ratings online. So um, sort of whatever speaks to you more as a person. Something else that I do want to call out uh, that's on the resource platform, which um, again is pertinent in this time. Uh, so we subsidize the cost for Acquire for Hire. Um, and what Acquire for Hire is, it's basically a centralized job board. Um, so basically you just have to do the application once and it blasts out to like 10 of the largest um, uh, largest job boards out there. And it's also going to give you salary suggestions. It's going to keep you updated on who applied, when they applied, all these things. Uh, we also do training on it to, as we do with everything else. So, you know, it, I know that there is um, in different areas of the state, especially there's some, um, you know, concern around staffing right now. So, uh, you know, if this is something you're, you know that you're having to do and you'd like some support on it, let us know. Some of the other pieces, um, there are some other really cool learning themes out there. So, um, you know, how I had mentioned that Bright by Text uses uh, specific trainings from other nonprofit organizations. One of the ones they do is PBS as well. And I love the PBS one because uh, it basically will just give you tons of like, you know, lesson plans, interactives, all kinds of things to be um, supportive of you. As an example, I have just on the next page, like, okay, if we wanted to do this mindful bodies and awareness of attention and breath, it's gonna tell us exactly, you know, what's required. Also, what's cool is for a lot of the videos, it will include, um, you know, from the Head Start Child Development Early Learning Framework, what uh, piece is this fitting into? So, um, just another one that's come recommended to me. I know some providers that use it to supplement their, um, their lesson plans. So that's more on the like, like, oh, serious, very deep, has everything kind of thing. So very deep. Then on the other side, there's the much, much, much less deep version, which is Storyline Online. It's fun because basically they animate uh, some of the most famous children's stories out there, and then they have um, celebrities read it. So if your voice is starting to wear after a long day and you're okay with that, just something that's fun. I've definitely ended some of my work days with Oprah reading to me. All right, this is a big one. I'm guessing that most of uh, the home providers on our call are familiar with him. If you are not, I cannot espouse him enough. Tom Copeland, uh, he basically, he runs a free blog and he just does tons and tons and tons of blogs about the family child care home business. Um, all the ways to make sure that, you know, you're maximizing your income. Uh, all the questions that like, you know, Google isn't going to get you the answer. Maybe he has something on it. So, um, you know, just small things. Like I just pulled two of the ones that, you know, on the less serious side, can I count hours spent mowing my lawn? On the more serious, what records must you give parents? Uh, he keeps it updated. He's had um, you know, some coronavirus specific information on there as well. Uh, and you can find on tomcoplandblog.com. He also um, has a Facebook where he posts the same stuff. Um, and I know he's been in Colorado a couple of times. He was down at the uh, Pikes Peak Family Child Care um, Association's talk in January of last year. Um, so that, that's more on the informational side and then jumping back again to the side of things about like, okay, well, what can I be using to help run my business? Uh, there is a whole bunch of curriculum and assessment tech that is available out there these days. Um, Funshine Express, a lot of people use that for their lesson plans. Um, the reason that I have it first is actually, um, Basically, every year at the Rocky Mountain Early Childhood Conference, somehow ELV gets sat next to Funshine Express. So I have talked with the creator of Funshine Express while you all are getting trained many times. And she is just an absolutely wonderful person. I 
one of my favorite people in the business. Um, so yes, yeah, so they, they run uh, some cool things. Uh, teaching strategies gold. That is one that if you're in early Head Start, you're probably very, very, very familiar with um, because it's sort of the gold standard right now around um, tracking Head Start and early Head Start. Now, what I have heard with Teaching Strategies Gold is that it can be very hard uh, to gain um, like initial proficiency on. You know, some of those trainings are hard. Um, but you know, that's where a lot of our ELV staff, we are um, familiar with it because that's what we use for our early Head Start grants. So, you know, if, if this is a kind of thing that might be interesting to you, let us know. Uh, cognitive toy box, that's sort of a new one. Um, it, what's cool about that is it's more of an interactive kind of thing. So uh, it's basically you have, you set, have the child do it themselves and then it scores. I mean, it doesn't show the kid the score, don't worry. But um, it, it, they run through and do these little things on the tablet. Um, I'd also say that in the same vein of childcare management systems, having seemingly hundreds of different varieties out there, uh, even more on the curriculum and assessment tech. So um, I would love to hear if there is a specific curriculum or assessment tech that you are using that you would recommend. Um, I, I would love it in the chat if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing. Um, now this last thing, this is for um, you know individuals that maybe aren't ready for a childcare management system or that feel they have all the administrative processes down, but maybe they're wanting you know a free way to look into uh, you know communication between um, directors and uh, and providers. And I have let's see in the chat, I've gotten a couple people mentioning teaching strategies gold and got overwhelming positive responses. So that's awesome. So yeah, again, that's another thing that I do want to highlight with technology. I'll use Teaching Strategies Gold as the example, but it would also apply to pretty much any child care management system. So all of these things are example of what's called change management. You're changing your processes, you're changing your operations. There's that initial uncomfortable feel. So it's, you have to learn how to use these things or, you know, get support to use them. But once you crest and you've onboarded and everything's easy, that's when you're going to pay dividends. You're going to get that smooth sailing. Um, so that's, you know, some of what we do on our end is we have like a very set um, like onboarding process where we're going to train you on specific things each time because we do recognize it's like when you dump an entire system that can track all this stuff at once, it's overwhelming. Um, but if you hang through it, that's where you're gonna eventually pay the dividends. And that seems to be what I get as consensus in the chat about uh, teaching strategies goal. Okay, so back to the uh, communications apps that I was talking about. Um, so again, these are the free ones out there. Uh, just two of the ones I've heard of, if you know more, again, please share. Um, so Remind and Class Dojo. Um, they are a little bit freemium where you could get extra things, but what they do at the base is it's allowing teachers and directors to easily communicate um, with parents of a specific classroom without giving out the teacher's cell phone number. That way, you know, that kind of two-way communication can happen during the day if that is something that is of interest to you. Um, I did, I was basically, this is, this whole area was t told to me out in, uh, South Carolina. I actually haven't heard too many Colorado providers using it yet. So that's why I'm bringing it back all to you. Um, but yeah, so just another cool way that you could potentially be doing communications if you're wanting, you know, your teachers to have some kind of private way to communicate. Okay. So. We're basically um, you know, near the end. Usually during this talk, um, it's in person, so I'm able to gauge a lot more of what people are using or not using, what they've liked, what they've experienced and didn't like. Um, and so that's where you know, we have about 10 to 15 minutes left. Um, I would love to hear if there are other technologies, apps, websites, information hubs, like what are you using to benefit you um, in this vein? Uh, and otherwise, what I'll do is I'll just hang on here. And if anybody has any kind of specific uh, child care management system question, I'm more than happy to answer that as well. And I'll just scroll through to make sure there weren't any big questions that I had missed as I was talking. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So not seeing any comments yet. I'll give it a couple more just to, uh, you know, give you all time to type. I know it takes a little bit. Um, I do want to just highlight again some of the logistics of this. Um, so if you have signed up for this course on PDIS, nothing else you have to do. On Monday or Tuesday of next week, I am going to go in and I am going to uh, basically approve all the people that I see in my attendee list. And then it's automatically going to filter your certificate into your PDIS account. If you uh, do not, if you did not sign up for this on PDIS, please make sure uh, in the post webinar messaging to sign up today. The registration is going to close um, at 11.59 tonight, at which point I can't do anything about it. Um, so yeah, if, you're, if you have a PDIS account and you wanna make sure that you're getting this credit for the course, um, we'll have in the post webinar messaging. And that is going to come about um, 30 minutes to an hour after we close this, uh, just because we have to uh, get some things loaded. Okay, let's see. I've had, um, oh, I've had more and more coming in. Um, all right. Uh, so I didn't state what the cost of our system is. Uh, so that is really dependent on the licensed capacity of the system. Uh, for child care management systems, most of them work off the total number of children that are gonna be in the system. We're a little different. We just work off your, of your licensed capacity. Um, for homes and for small centers, so like under 30 licensed capacity, it's $25 a month. And then that scales on up to like the largest centers and the largest price point is $100 a month. Um, so it just depends on what kind of uh, provider base you are. Um, does check-in also ask the COVID health questions? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, I don't know about the other systems because that's, um, you know, obviously a very new thing for a lot of things. We're going to have ours rolled out um, before the end of this month. So basically there will be, um, when you're going to through that check-in, uh, there's a place to first put in the um, uh, temperature and then it asks all of the um, health questions. We have somebody with, uh, um, Mesa County Public Health that um, basically made sure that we did everything by the book there. Um, okay, one I haven't heard of actually just came in, so I'm going to research this afterwards, um, is Child Pilot Inc. Um, person that did put that in, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little more about it, I'd love to hear, um, but no, that is actually one I am not familiar with. Uh, let's see. Ooh, okay. Um, somebody else uh, did ask if funding ex or Fun Shine Express is a Colorado Shines approved curriculum. Uh, yeah, and it, um, also we're actually having one of our providers join in as well, stating that they're using a combination of ELV, Fun Shine Express, and then creative curriculum. And creative curriculum is, you know, another example of uh, all of these uh, Remind and Class Dojo. Uh, not, no. Sorry, reading the screen is an example of these curriculum and assessment texts. Um, also, this is a good question more on the logistics side. Uh, so when we send out the post webinar messaging, there's going to be a lot of different things in there. So there is going to be a copy of this talk that's going to be a, a YouTube link. It's going to be a copy of all the slides. Um, there's going to be contact information for me. There's going to be um, how you can join ELV's resource platform uh, for free for the rest of this year. Um, let's see. So yeah, and so yes, you will get a copy of all of the information. Um, going back to uh, getting a lot, of, a lot of questions. So I do apologize if I don't get to yours. Um, so how do we share with our licensing? If you are using ELV and you wanna share with your licensing tech for the virtual licensing visit, uh, basically just let your um, licensing specialist know uh, that you are using ELV. And then on the other side, uh, send us an email, our client support um, an email, letting us know who your licensing specialist is. That way we can get in touch. At this point, most Colorado licensing specialists are familiar with us, especially in the um, 
especially in the metro area, but more rural areas as well. And uh, we also did a couple uh, weeks ago, we had a, we do on Facebook Live, we did a What's Up Wednesday um, that uh, with one of our home providers that has had one of those virtual licensing visits. So if you want to know what it was like for them, um, we have that. Also, I do want to plug, um, you'll, you'll get messaging about this in the, probably next week or the week after, but we will be having uh, hosting another webinar series. Um, don't worry, I'll be back in my moderator role. This is the only one where I'm the speaker as well, um, where basically we'll have licensing on to talk about the virtual licensing visits. Uh, and so that's gonna be virtual licensing visits for everyone in Colorado, virtual licensing visits, how it's different if you're using Core, uh, and then, you know, there are a couple things that there are still in-person uh, visits for, but, you know, that's more of the serious kinds of things. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. So if virtual licensing visits is something you're a little confused about, don't worry, we're going to have a webinar on it soon. Um, oh, yay. Somebody asked uh, how to have like an in-depth demo of our system. Uh, here at the end, here is... Uh, my contact details, um, feel free to call or give me an email. Um, I'm also, um, as I said, I'll be more than happy to um, supply that in the post webinar messaging so you can see it there. Um, okay, looks like I did get, you know, just at the, at the end, I'm going to be um, wrapping up unless there's any big questions left. I do have one more, uh, where to get the training certificate in PDIS. Uh, so just once again, I basically, if you registered for this course on PDIS, in the back end, I'm just going to approve everybody and then it automatically feeds into the system. Um, I had the PDIS training uh, a month and a half ago. That's how it was explained to me that it's going to be, um, you know, streamlined where there's not anything that the provider has to do that it'll automatically be taken over and put into your account because you registered for this inside PDIS. All right. Okay. Well, we are starting to run low on time. So um, I'm going to plan to just give it one more minute on the questions route, just in case there's any last minute things that um, people are, are needing answered. If um, there was anything I missed, I do apologize. Please feel free to follow up with me. Um, and then an hour from now, uh, please expect that uh, post webinar messaging. All right. Oh, uh, the cognitive toy box. Um, I, I'm actually, I'm pretty sure it's like a $10. It's not super expensive. It's on our resource platform. So if you're on a resource platform, um, you, you can find it there. Um, and uh, so somebody also asked just ELV specific question about the temperatures. Uh, yes, that's coming by the end of this month. Um, we're going to have a release about it. You'll see it on our social media. So if you're not following ELV's Facebook, please do. We also blast it out through Core as well to make sure you have it there. But yes, you are going to be able to put temperatures into ELV, and that will be starting um, probably next week. I think the development's basically done. Um, okay. Well, with that, I am going to um, stop sharing and I am going to end the webinar. Thank you so much for, um, you know, uh, joining me today because this is sort of, you know, I'm doing it by the seat of my pants, being moderator and speaker. So I, I appreciate you all for uh, hopping in and spending your afternoon with me. So um, I am going to end it and I hope everybody has a great weekend. Bye-bye.